okay. Our next question is from Stephen on the optimal fructosamine range. Hi, Rob. I have heard you recommend checking fructosamine to help triangulate glycation and see what's happening with blood sugar, but I can't seem to find any ref references for an optimal fructosamine range. I recently did some blood work and had a fasting glucose of 80 milligrams per deciliter, A1C of 5.6, and a fructosamine of 250. I've been experimenting with a glucometer recently and my average blood glucose based on dozens of readings during carb testing is in the upper 90s. So I'm thinking my A1C looks artificially high due to the red blood cells living longer. I'm curious to what you think of this and what I can take away from the fructosamine value of 250. For context, I'm a 29 year old male, 160 pounds between 10 and 12% body fat and have been eating a mostly low carb paleo diet for the past year, recently gravitating closer to carnivore. I appreciate you and Nikki and all the work that you do. Cool. Yeah, and this is, um, we, we talked about this a ton in Wired to Eat. Mm -hmm. This is one of the like ongoing challenges and we're actually doing some surveys of folks right now wanting to know where their major challenges occur with blood work as it relates to understanding their health. And so we're gonna be tinkering with some ways of helping people really unpack that because there's a shocking a of amount of confusion and a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. A lot of misplaced fear. And this is one of the really common things that, that pops up. Folks will get an A1C and it'll be on the high side. They might do then uh, some sort of a, a fasting uh, blood test in the morning, whether they do at home or elsewhere. And that looks a little bit on the high side. And they're like, damn, you know, th th this stuff's all, all screwed up and wrong and backwards. But they're eating pretty low carb, they're active, their sleep is good. And so you're like, man, I don't lean. know. And yeah, they're lean. It's like, I don't know. And there are some scenarios like, like Dr. Sean Baker is really interesting in that he eats no carbohydrate, but he has a remarkably high fasting blood glucose and a pretty elevated A1C. We tend to see profiles like that in elite level athletes. Uh, whether or not that's pathological is up for debate. Some folks think it is, some folks think it not, it, it's not, but this is one of these kind of paradoxical things that occurs there. But what's what's interesting, and it's it should be maybe a little bit informative, it is well understood that when folks are eating a lower carbohydrate diet, red blood cells may live two or three times longer than normal. So I think the normal lifespan of RBCs is about 90 days and it can dramatically extend the life cycle of these red blood cells. Now that's a whole interesting thing in and of itself when you think about health and longevity because these red blood cells come online and then they live and then they die and then we need to uh, allocate more stem cells to Make produce more red blood cells. Those stem cells are a finite resource and once they're gone, they're kind of gone. And this is why people may motor along pretty well and then all of a sudden they just crater because they've literally depleted their whole stem cell pool. And, and that's a whole other, whole other thing. And you and I never got to like bank our fetal cord blood or anything. So we're, 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 we're kind of out of luck in that regard. But a way that we can triangulate in on this story is looking at fructosamine. Fructosamine is another marker of advanced glycation end products, but it deals with the blood albumin, not with the red blood cell surface. So it's a way that we can kind of triangulate in on this. And uh, for the reference range, and Stephen, I don't know, man, like not to be a dick, but uh, uh, fructosamine ranges, like they're, they're, they're pretty easy to track down on the, the interwebs and, and they tend to be about 200 to uh, 280 for the fructosamine ranges. His is 250, which is a little bit at the, at the higher end of normal. So there might be a little bit of, of something going on there, but I mean, it's de the, the thing is though, is that 5.6 A1C is inching into peri-diabetic range according to the A1C reading. It is not remotely close to the peri-diabetic range when we're considering the fructosamine number. Hmm. So, the, you know, this is still in kind of trying to triangulate in on this, like, the fasting blood glucose is not particularly high in general. Uh, the the A1C looks a little high, and then the a, the fructosamine is kind of middle. It, it's not super high. It's not super low. So it's a little ambiguous. It doesn't doesn't ferret this stuff out all the time. But it, it's uh, the, those are the ranges. The about 200 to 280. Um, Steven's a little bit at the higher end of normal. Um, but all things considered, I'm not really seeing a real significant issue here. But these are the things to think about uh, 
Is sodium intake on point? Is sleep good? What time are you going to bed? What time are you getting up? You know, these other stress factors. And is Stephen, who oh, you mentioned, basically low carb paleo, he doesn't really mention his acti activity level. It is possible some people that are very, very active can experience chronically elevated blood glucose levels mm -hmm. just from the activity. We saw this in the CrossFit scene in general, it first got on my radar when we would see type 1 diabetics in CrossFit and their blood glucose levels would go to the moon post-exercise because of the, the stress response. So, yeah. Okay. So, Stephen, not 100% you know, unequivocal uh, answer here, but all things considered, again, when we look at this stuff, I, I would say that probably... The A1C is, in fact, an, art, an artifact of uh, red blood cells living longer, most likely. 